I would like to introduce our case series, Unusual Pathophysiological Mechanisms of Tyrolism in Two Horses. I'm Rosanna Olley, and I was a resident in equine internal medicine at Leehurst Equine Hospital, University of Liverpool, when this work was performed. I am now employed at Scott Mitchell and Associates in Hexham. My co-author Richard Piercy is from the Comparative Neuromuscular Disease Laboratory at the Royal Veterinary College, and my co-author Gail Leeming is from the Department of Veterinary Pathology at the University of Liverpool. The final supervising author on the paper, Professor Catherine McGowan, is also based at Leehurst Equine Hospital, University of Liverpool. Parasympathetic stimulation causes the secretion of the majority of salivary fluid and the secretion of mucin from mucous glands. Sympathetic stimulation acts to synergistically augment salivary production in salivary glands already under parasympathetic stimulation and increases exocytosis proteins from salivary cells to alter the composition of saliva. Therefore, autonomic stimulation always acts to increase saliva secretion and there is no antagonism between the two arms of the autonomic nervous system. Tylism can be defined as excessive salivation either because of hypersalivation or consequent difficulty in swallowing secretions. It is recognised in the horse as overflow of saliva from the mouth. In case one, a nine-year-old thoroughbred gelding presented acutely with left-sided head tilt, left-sided paresis and ataxia, and tyalism, which was unusually non-viscous and apparently associated with increased arousal levels of the horse. He was referred seven weeks later when radiography of the skull identified increased size and opacity of the left tympanic bulla, consistent with bone modelling. The left-sided peripheral vestibular disease was suspected to be related to trauma. Injury to the closely anatomically associated parasympathetic innervation of the salivary glands was thought to have caused tyalism, either due to denervation hypersensitivity or excessive parasympathetic activation caused by focal inflammation. Experimental parasympathectomy in rats has been shown to increase sympathetically mediated fluid secretion of saliva, so it could potentially explain the non-viscous salivation associated with activation of the sympathetic system. Repeat examination of the gelding, six months after onset of clinical signs, identified further compensation of the left side of vestibular disease, but persistence of tylosin when the gelding was startled or excited. In case two, a seven-year-old Dutch warm-blood mare presented with a single self-limiting choke episode, subsequent progressive tylism, and laryngeal paralysis, which progressed from right-sided to bilateral over a few days. The mare was referred 10 days after onset of signs and was quiet but responsive, exhibiting tylism. Computed tomography of the head and upper neck was unremarkable. Thoracic ultrasonography showed a progressive pleural effusion. Due to continued deterioration, the mare was euthanized. Partial postmortem examination identified a large mediastinal mass, a T cell lymphoma. The bilateral laryngeal paralysis was attributed to compression of the recurrent laryngeal nerves in the cranial thorax. The tylism was suspected to be due to partial extraluminal obstruction of the esophagus, affecting the ability to swallow saliva, although the possibility of vagal afferent activation associated salivary gland stimulation was also considered. In conclusion, although the majority of cases of tylism are secondary to a physical obstruction preventing saliva being swallowed, such as oral foreign body, secondary to dysphagia, such as guttural pouch mycosis, or due to equine dysautonomia, it is important to be aware of the neuroanatomy of the autonomic system controlling salivary gland activation, and to be aware that extraluminal compression of the intrathoracic esophagus by space-occupying lesions in the mediastinum is possible.